So the final thing we want to do is add a way for us to easily instantiate our flexible UI elements. As we build and add more, it would be nice to be able to easily create them from our right-click menu here. So it's not too hard to do that. We just have to write a few methods inside of a script. So let's create a new folder called editor and then a new script in there called flexible UI instance. If we open that up, let's add the Unity editor namespace into our usings and change from a mono behavior to an editor script. And let's get rid of these. And then in here, we just want to create a static method that's going to allow us to actually create objects uh, from our right click menu. So the first thing we we'll need to do is create a static reference to a game object called clicked object. Then let's write a method called create that returns a game object and takes in a string called object name. And we'll assign a game object called instance from the instantiate method using an object that we're going to load from the resources folder using resource.load. And that will be the object name. We'll also name the instance the same so that it shows up in the hierarchy rather than just a random number. And then we want to set clicked object to be whatever our selection currently is as a game object. And then what we need to do is make sure, and if the clicked object is not null, then set our instance to a child of whatever the clicked object's transform is. And then don't forget to return the instance. So put simply, this is just a static method that allows us to create the object matching the name that we give it uh, in our resources folder. And then it sets it as a child of whatever we've got selected in a hierarchy so that it doesn't appear at the top of the hierarchy, but it appears where we need it to be inside of our UI. So back in Unity, I've already got a resources folder and we need to set our button as a prefab in our resources folder to be able to instantiate it. And the last thing to do back in our flexible UI instance script is to actually create a method that's going to let us do that. So let's create an add button method and then simply call create and the name of the prefab which is just button and then so that we can have it in our right click menu we just need to call menu item game object slash flexible UI slash button and set the priority to zero so that it actually appears in our right click menu rather than just elsewhere in our create menu. In Unity, you should be able to right click on the canvas. And you can see that our flexible UI now appears in our create menu. Uh, it should also appear in the game object menu here. And then we choose button. The new button is then created as a child of our canvas and behaves just as it normally would. So that's pretty much it. The only thing worth mentioning is that, for instance, if we wanted to create two different versions of the same behavior, it's just very simple. We can now just duplicate our skin, create an alternate skin. And let's say we now want to change all of the buttons to use this sort of green in every single state, use this green UI element and 
um, have all of the colors to be the same, so we'll set all of it to be white. And completely reskin our button. And yeah, let's say that you're gonna use that one instead. We can now have two of the exact sort of same types. So these are our two confirm buttons here. But if we then drag our alternate skin onto our skin data, it then inherits from the alternate skin. And so these two are technically the same, but different, if that makes sense. So because they're inheriting from a different scriptable object, we can reskin those elements. So let's also create our close button and give that the alternate skin. And because it's a decline button, it's still using the decline icon that we've set, but it's using the button sprite from our alternate skin set. So there's a lot you can do here, and uh, hopefully you can see that using custom components and a scriptable object, it's really quick and easy to develop more complex styles and behaviors without heavily relying on code. Now, if you want to take this further, I'd suggest writing a custom editor or inspector for the skin data and scriptable object. You know, perhaps adding property drawers for different UI assets so it's much easier to read rather than just this sort of printout of data. Um, and it gives you a way to interact better with the different UI. You might also want to extend further parts of the buttons, uh, maybe display different images, uh, icons or text based on different enum types. And it's really a starting point for whatever you can imagine. So hopefully shows you a workflow for dealing with UI that you'll like. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with.